Welcome to worship here on January 17th with Trinity Lutheran Church in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Before we continue with our worship, we do have a few announcements for you all. The first is that we are going to be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion later in this service. So please, at this time, if you haven't already, grab that wine or grape juice, those crackers or that bread, so we can celebrate that together as a community later. This coming Wednesday, we are going to be celebrating peace and unity and togetherness as an Eau Claire community by having an interfaith prayer service. That will be, again, this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock, and you can join us by following a special uh, YouTube link that will be posted on our church website. We'll get to hear prayer and uh, thoughts from various religious community leaders here in Eau Claire. Next uh, coming Sunday, we are going to be celebrating Noah's Ark Sunday. So you can do one better than my colorful stole. You can wear tie-dye with us on Noah's Ark Sunday to celebrate that awesome ministry and mission that we support here as Trinity Lutheran Church, making peacemakers for our world. Following worship next Sunday, we are going to be having our budget forum to discern kind of where God is leading us in mission for the coming year of 2021. So join us for that at 11 o'clock, January 24th. Because the following Sunday, January 31st, is our annual meeting. And that will be at 11 a.m. as well. And you can find that Zoom link on our church website as well. With that, let us continue our worship service. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, when I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. be your name when the sun's shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering there's pain in the offering blessed be your name Please join us in our confession and forgiveness this Sunday morning. 
Lord, we confess today our lack of faith. We see a glimpse of what we ought to be, and we know we fall short of that goal. We desire faith that is unswerving and solid, yet we crumble under trials and temptations. We want to be strong, but we know our own weakness. Forgive us, Lord. Accept us as we are. And, and then, then by, by your, your gift, gift of, of grace, grace, create in each of us hearts that are true. Our God created us to live in harmony with Jesus and each other. Although sin separates us, sin never has the last word in our lives. God has provided means by which our sins can be forgiven and forgotten. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ has broken down the walls that separate us and has reunited us with God. God is good, and by God's grace, our sins are forgiven. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you invite us to come and see the good news that you have proclaimed for all people, not just a select few. Help us to be bearers of that good news good news of love and grace for all people. And so we pray today that we might resist those forces of sin that seek to corrupt us inside our own hearts and minds and publicly on the streets. Help us to be those hands and feet that our world so desperately needs. In your name we pray. Amen. May God's peace be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. From the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Word of God, word of life. Well, good morning. Are there any children in your household today that might want to hear a little message? If they are, have them come on around and, and uh, hear what we have to talk about today. Well, kids, have you ever been lost? Have you ever not known where you are? Has that happened to you? I'm not talking about when you play hide and seek and you're the one who wins because nobody can find you. What I'm talking about is really being lost. It happened to me one time. I was so completely lost. I was even an adult, and I was out walking in the woods. I was doing a little grouse hunting up in the northern woods of Minnesota, and I wandered off the trail. 
And I didn't even know I had wandered off the trail. And suddenly, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know where the trail was. I didn't where, know where the road was or my car. I didn't know where I was. I was lost. If you've ever been lost, you know what was going through my head at the time, right? I was scared. It was scary being lost. Even though I was an adult, walking around out in the woods not knowing how to get back was really scary to me. And, and it was really nice when I finally was found. And it was a friend of mine who was up on the road who started yelling, and I was finally found. So sometimes you have to go through those scary things. But what's really cool is that you don't go through them alone. You see, Jesus comes to find us. We're going to hear in the gospel lesson in just a minute about how Jesus found Philip. And then once Jesus found Philip, then Philip goes and finds Nathaniel. And it keeps on going. We keep on bringing more people into the fold, into uh, God's discipleship, and working together um, to do incredible things. And th I don't think they were ever lost again. So friends, if you are ever lost, and I hope it doesn't happen to you, just know that you're not alone, that Jesus is with you, and just know that um, it's probably going to be just fine. Just be careful, okay? All right, thank you so much for coming up today, and I'll see you again soon. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the first chapter of John, starting at verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So, our mind is made up. We know all about it. People we trust confirm it. It's a big problem, and it's been in a long-term building process. Others may try to convince us otherwise, but it changes nothing. All that is contrary to our opinion, just fake news. We even feel compelled by our faith to rise up and protect and restore our sense of what is good. What am I talking about? Can anything good come out of the pickle? Now, for some of you who may be viewing uh, from outside of Eau Claire, the pickle is part of an infamous group of 
bars and taverns down on Water Street in Eau Claire and been the haunts of many uh, college students through the years. Now, the pickle has had memes going around during this coronavirus time that says anyone who's lived through this doesn't have to fear COVID-19. So the pickle, I am not trying to offend anybody who may have very positive feelings about the pickle, but uh, you may have had great fun there, and that's your thing, but I know different. See, what I'm trying to illustrate is something uh, that has been existing for a long time, even as far back as Nathaniel's time. Theologian Steve Garnas Holmes calls it cultural fundamentalism. Cultural fundamentalism. And it's this belief that there is one truth and we own it. That the belief that this group alone is all that matters and that we are entitled to decide what is true, what is real what is important. We would not be dissuaded by some uh, group that would say otherwise, um, that it's not that the truth, it's not the truth itself that matters, but kind of who says it. My group has been saying it, and that's what matters. We believe and we follow those who affirm our sense of the truth or highlight the grievances that we kind of have about the whole system. We don't want to hear the contrary voices. Can anything good come out of the pickle? Jesus is calling his disciples in our gospel lesson today. He's already uh, found Andrew, and then Andrew comes and brings his brother Simon Peter to meet this Messiah as well. And then our story picks up today where, where uh, Jesus has gone off to Galilee and there he comes and finds Philip. And when Philip comes to understand who this is, Philip goes off and finds Nathanael. And when he finds him, Philip says, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and all the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. This is big news. This is huge. You would think that Nathanael would respond by saying, oh, but instead, Nathanael says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? See, this is kind of this uh, this situation where where we don't exactly know what Nathaniel is thinking, but it illustrates a little bit about what that whole cultural fundamentalism is all about. You see, um, Nathaniel... He knew the truth. He, he knew that his group alone mattered. Maybe that group of uh, Bethsaidian boys had, had played uh, some sports against those Nazareans or something like that. Um, he knew that nothing good could come out of there. And uh, he was entitled to um, decide that this is the truth that this was important, that this was in fact real, that nothing good could come out of Nazareth. He wouldn't be dissuaded by uh, other folks who were telling him that it was. Um, He knew, he was certain that's the kind of um, uh, person that he was. He, He had his own ideas about how things were. And so in that moment, uh, he had to uh, be convinced, not through dialogue or fact or anything like that, but in Philip's response to him to just come and see, come and see. 
Our country is beset by cultural fundamentalism in so many different ways. Many believe that there is just one truth and that they own it. Many uh, believe that their group alone is what matters, that they are going to decide what is real, what is true, what is important. Facts contrary to that uh, do not dissuade us. Um, we just like to follow those voices that affirm our sense of reality, our sense of the truth. And so uh, when we get those situations, we start to wonder, can anything good come out of the pickle? We see it in such binary terms. It's either right or wrong. It's black or white. There's no middle ground for us to come together. This kind of thinking cannot bring about the kind of healing that we need in our world. Nathaniel has prejudged the situation. He has used this sense of cultural fundamentalism uh, to cement the fact that nothing good's going to come out of Nazareth. And then Philip counters with Nathaniel. Uh, this, he takes this resistance and uses some incarnational uh, presence, right? And just says, come and see. Come and see. And then we know the rest of the story. Nathaniel actually goes with him, and he meets Jesus, and he's blown away. He confesses that Jesus truly is uh, the uh, Son of God, the King of Israel, as he proclaims. Nathan came and saw and was transformed by this encounter with Jesus. He saw miracles. He heard teachings about peace and justice for the least of these. He saw a compassionate treatment of others, even others with no standing in the society whatsoever. He saw nonviolent resistance in the face of power. We sometimes get the message that, um, uh, of Jesus wrong. Sometimes we have our own cultural fundamentalism of thinking that we know what this all means, what Jesus is trying to tell us, and we're not open to other ways of thinking about it. But Jesus, Jesus is calling us back. Jesus is saying to us, come and see. It's time for all of us to check our biases at the door and to stop this cultural fundamentalism and seek unity in Christ. One way that that can happen is to come and see, to open up the scripture and meet Jesus once again, to dwell deeply in the word and drop those preconceived notions that we've gotten through the years, through our various theological lenses, and hear afresh what Jesus is wanting for us. His teachings do not talk about armed insurrection. They talk about peace and unity for all people, justice and peace for all people. That's what I hear in Jesus' words. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Yeah, I think it certainly did. This is most certainly true.
that the table is set, please join me in the litany for communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death and resurrection until Christ comes again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come to this feast prepared for you. Come and see the goodness of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have fed us not with just bread and wine, but with grace. That good news of grace that we cannot earn our salvation, but you indeed give that as a free gift to us through faith. So we pray today that we might use that freedom to go and serve your people in the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now sing our final song. Died.
Go in peace to love and share the good news. Thanks be to God.